Welcome to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, live from the OC Talk Radio Studios at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest impacting our community in a positive way. Today, I welcome National Association of People Against Bullying Executive Director Anna Mendez. She was motivated to start the organization after the untimely death of her son, Daniel, who was driven to end his own life at the age of 16 after years of bullying in San Clemente. Thank you, Anna, for being on Impact OC. Thank you, Dawn, for having us. Anna, please tell us what your organization's mission is. NAPAB is a 501c3 charity. So our mission is to educate, provide support to schools, districts, victims, parents, families, and the public at large about the devastating toll that childhood bullying can take. So we engage in media campaigns with mass media. We provide journalism and press reports on bullying news, bullying incidents, and bullying litigation across the country. But we also bring violations of accreditation standards, which require safe, healthy, and nurturing school environments to the attention of the accrediting agencies. Another important service that we do offer is we help students to start their own student-run anti-bullying clubs. The first one was started in our son's memory at St. Clemente High School. It was called Cool to be Kind. His friends started it, just a handful of high school kids. Today, we've helped start over a hundred Cool to be Kind clubs around the world, including chapters in Honduras, Nicaragua, Thailand, Scotland, and Tanzania in Africa. And this really goes to show us that bullying is a universal problem and the kids everywhere are willing to stand up and fight for change. Another unique thing that our charity does is that we become directly involved in cases of bullying. So parents will reach out to us if their child is experiencing bullying and they feel that the school really isn't acting sufficiently on their behalf and they're not protecting the child as they should be in loco parentis. So we reach out to the administration, to the school board, and sometimes to the accrediting associations to bring the situation to their attention. And we offer to help in the resolution of that case. Our particular focus is the child's well-being and to get that child to a safe place. Explain what bullying is. So a lot of organizations and institutions get very wrapped up in the definition of bullying and they want a very robust definition. We look at it very simply that regardless of, you know, it, it's not about whether or not it needs to be repeated or whether or not it needs to be intentional. Bullying is harassment, plain and simple. It's student on student harassment and bullying. So it's any unwanted or unwelcome gesture or comment. We look at it from the victim's perspective. Is a lot of it physical bullying or psychological bullying, meaning there's no touching? Well, both of them are, are very damaging. Physical bullying, the, the issue with physical bullying is that it leaves visible wounds. With the psychological bullying, the relational bullying, those don't leave wounds. And so parents can often not see it. They don't, they don't realize that their child is being bullied because they can't see the wounds that are on their hearts and on their minds. So what kinds of bullying are you seeing that's more prevalent? Well, we're seeing both. We're seeing both. Our son, unfortunately, he experienced both. He experienced a lot of name calling, um, a lot of um, isolation, um, being called all sorts of horrible things, but also physical bullying. He was pushed up against lockers and beaten up and thrown into trash cans and called um, trash and garbage, and the trash cans were rolled around against the buildings. And, um, and there was really nothing about him that you would have thought would have put him in a high-risk category. He was he was strong, he was handsome, he was an honor roll student, he was scoring touchdowns on the football field. 
So it, he was overlooked. He slipped through the cracks. And starting this organization, what has that done for you? Well, for us, you know, as a parent, when you lose a child, there's an overwhelming sense of, of not only loss, but of failure. And for us, especially after his friends started the first anti-bullying club, we, we saw how healing that was for them, and we knew we had to help other kids that were struggling with the same thing. Because suddenly people started opening up to us and telling us my child is going through the same thing, or my child is seeing the same thing at school, and we couldn't just stay silent. We knew that silence was not the answer. So we began speaking up and helping other people, and hopefully, we hope that Daniel's death will have not been in vain. What is conflict resolution? Conflict resolution is something that schools today are, are starting to, it's a practice that schools are starting to rely upon. And our organization takes the position that it's not a good solution. And the reason is that bullying is not a conflict. Bullying is harassment and abuse. So when you put a victim and a bully together in the same room and you say there's a there's a conflict between you two and you two need to work it out, it can be much more damaging to the victim and it doesn't help the bully understand what they've done wrong because the victim doesn't have, he has not played a part. This is not his fault that this is happening. It's not a conflict. It's similar to putting a rape victim in a room with their rapist and saying, you two need to work things out because there's a conflict between you. No, this is harassment and abuse, and we're sending the wrong message to the victim that they're somehow partly to blame. So how do you solve the problem? Well, there is a restorative justice that we very highly encourage um, schools to, to adopt. Restorative justice is just that. It's justice, but it's restorative. It's healing, and it's healing for both parties. So rather than punishment to one party with no follow-up, restorative justice relies on counseling and psychiatric services, and this is why it's so important for us to continue to support our schools to have more therapy, more counselors on site um, so they can so they can help. And basically, the restorative justice practices, they start by asking, what happened? Why did it happen? How did it affect you? And how did it affect others? Understand what you do affects others, and there's a ripple effect. And what can you do to repair the harm you caused? What can we do to make sure it never happens again? And an apology plays such a big role in that. It, it's so simple. It's such a simple act, and yet people still struggle with a true apology. Just acknowledge your transgression, apologize for it, and ensure that it will never happen again. This is what the victim needs to hear to start their healing, but it's also healing for the bully to be, to be taught that that's what they need to do. Today, it's in amazing how many, how many adults will contact our organization and say, I realize now I was a bully when I was in school and I wanna make amends for it. it. It haunts them to this day. So what do you do to help them? Well, they take part in the organization. They help with um, activities. They wanna be involved in in restorative justice. They want to do good now. They want to help victims of bullying. They want to spread the news that bullying is not okay. To this day, they suffer. And a lot of Daniel's friends as well. After he died, we began getting calls. We got visits from people that weren't really very close with him. They weren't his best friends. And we didn't even know these kids, but they began posting on social media. They began telling us. Um, they made statements. You know, I have some here. It says, 
I honestly think about him at least once a month, and although we were not good friends, he really impacted my life. I like to think of myself as someone who stands up for others, but that semester I didn't do much to stop the bullying, and it still haunts me to this day. So these kids are still suffering from what they saw and didn't stop. The psychological trauma caused by bullying, is that on both ends, the bully and the victim? Yes, and the psychological trauma, what people need to understand is that it's not mental illness. What happens is that the victim begins to believe that it's their fault. When adults look at the bully situation and then it ends, they think, okay, it's over, it's ended. But for the victim, it isn't over. They're left with a seed that's been planted in their minds that say, I am not good enough. Somehow I made this happen to me. And they begin wondering, when is this going to happen again? And they become very sensitive to it. They become hypersensitive to the possibility of bullying. This is called psychological trauma. And psychologists and therapists need to understand that it needs to be treated differently than mental illness. So how do you treat that? Well, there are a lot of really great ways. We, we have the resources. We just need to get it to the students. For example, um, EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Things, uh, techniques that are used on, for example, um, veterans coming back from war that have seen devastate, that have been in devastating situations. They're not mentally ill. They're psychologically traumatized. And there are ways that the professionals can treat them. They just need to recognize it. Daniel's therapist did not recognize the psychological trauma. They knew about the bullying, but they thought, you know, it's just bullying and it's just a fact of life. And, you know, bear in mind that our son died in 2009. So it really wasn't as um, much of an issue. It wasn't people weren't educated enough at that time. Today, we're much more educated. We understand the issues. The therapists, the teachers, the psychologists, the parents, they need to understand that when you traumatize someone, there will be repercussions and it can last a lifetime if it's not treated. Now, are you dealing with bullying only at the level of children or are you dealing it with adults as well? We do not. We don't have the resources to deal with adult bullying. So, Today, we focus only on school-age children, K through 12, and our, our clubs are all in high schools, and our sources, our resources are to help parents of children in school. And children also are, are at a much more disadvantage than adults because adults have the coping mechanism, whereas children don't. Their frontal lobes aren't as developed as adults. And so, they need more help. They need more resources than the adults do. The link between bullying and suicide. Huge, huge. It, it's always questioned. And the link between uh, um, suicide and, and bullying has never been more evident than it is today. Um, bullied children are more than eight times more likely to have suicide ideations they're two times more likely to attempt suicide. What happens is bullied children become very angry and they either blame themselves and turn the anger inward and commit suicide or they turn the anger outward. And this is where you have the school shootings and the violence. Um, so it behooves all of us to pay particular attention the, in 2019, one in five teens seriously considered suicide and one in 11 teens attempted it. it. It's just astronomical, the link between bullying and suicide. In 2009, we didn't understand these dynamics. Now, these people who've experienced bullying as a child and then they become an adult, are there any kind of signs in adulthood that we could see in people that would kind of signal to us that maybe they were bullied when they were children? Well, you know, it, that's interesting, Dawn, because it is a cycle, right? So they say that bullies bully because they were bullied 
when adult bullies bully because they were bullied as children. And so we say break that cycle. We understand that it's a cycle, but you can break it. And the moment you break it is when you say, I want to help someone else. You know, there was something I was reading um, where Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, was asked by one of her students, what's the first sign of civilization in an ancient culture? And they thought, oh, it's going to be about fish hooks or clay pots or grinding stones. And instead, she said it was the discovery of a leg bone that had been broken and then healed. Because in an animal world, when you think about it and you break a bone, you're at a disadvantage. You can't hunt for food. You can't run from predators. You become food for predators. But the healing of a leg bone could only happen with the help from someone else. So someone has taken the time to be kind, to stay with you, to bind up that bone, to feed and care for you until you're healed. So the first sign of civilization is through kindness. When someone helps someone else, that's when we stop becoming animals. So when people hear others say, I was bullied as a child, and you sense that maybe they didn't get the help, probably the best thing a person can do is just act kind to them? Well, first of all, we say, get the therapy that you need because you're traumatized. And that trauma it will manifest itself in very different ways in the way you handle your relationships with your partner or your children or your bosses and your coworkers. It will manifest. And there are ways that they can help you, but first you have to verbalize it. And therapists don't always recognize it. So it is solvable. That's the shame of it all is that it's a solvable problem if we recognize it. Now, when you say solvable, does that mean that the thought of what happened to them as a child goes away or just that they can live with what happened in the past and not let it impact their future? Exactly. Well, they reprocess it. What happens with victims often on their own, they're trying to do this on their own, is they play the bullying event over and over again in their minds and but they add a different ending, like they're somehow stronger or they overcome it or they make friends with the bully and they continue to play it over and over again. And, but that's, they can't do it on their own. They need the help from professionals. And that's when they begin to self-medicate. And a large percentage of children um, that are bullied. Bullied children are more likely to take drugs and, and abuse alcohol, but their tormentors also experience stress well into adulthood. So the issue is bad for everyone, and it's bad for the bystanders who ignore it, who continue to have these, these um, reminders that they saw it happening and they didn't stand up for it and they didn't do enough for it. What kind of adult therapy would help? psychological a therapist that understands PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder not all therapists do but therapists that understand post-traumatic stress disorder and that are familiar with the with the means of being able to address it how can people get involved with your organization Go to napab.org, N-A-P-A-B. It stands for National Association of People Against Bullying, NAPAB.org. And I understand you're available for presentations and seminars. Definitely. Because of COVID, we're limiting the in-person presentations, but we're still available for webinars. So when people hear others have been bullied, what do you want them to say to the people who say they've been bullied? I'm sorry, if, if when, when people say that they have, they know of people who've been bullied, what should they say to the person who indicated that they were bullied? Oh, to say there's a solution for you and we can, we can help. And so you recommend they get the help so that they can live a productive adult life? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is possible for them. Again, it's something that can be addressed and it is possible but they need to understand that they were abused, they were traumatized, and now they need to get the help that they need. By the same token, how should others treat them when they know that they were bullied? With kindness. 
Thank you, National Association of People Against Bullying Executive Director Anna Mendez for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.